Good morning, everybody. Hope your evening went well. Here it is, July the 30th, and we have ourselves a whale of a news day on top. On tap, we start off with ADP 235. That would certainly be supportive for the economy. Second quarter. GDP plus 3%, 3.1, 3 3.2 is where the numbers are, deflator, 2.0, crude, minus 0.5, million barrels and then FOMC unchanged. Expectations minus 15 billion taken out of quantitative easing. Interest rates unchanged. Now a lot, almost everything we're going to be doing today is going to hinge on this second quarter GDP number right here at 3.1. All Ever since the first quarter's numbers have come in, second quarter, we're back on the growth track. So we have minus 2.9. If we come in 3% today, and 3% third quarter and fourth quarter, then we're looking at 1.5. 1.7 for the year, which would be characterized because it's less than 2% is modest growth, followed by moderate growth of 3% in 2015. So that is the financial meme. This is the story. This is the one that the Fed supports uh, that we've been given um, ever since the first quarter's numbers came out. So. We've got uh, a trading range market with a seller definitely above 16, and we've had a buyer uh, below uh, 125 even, and I think that's what we face right now today. So uh, I'd like to buy if the numbers are halfway close uh, against 125 even um, in anticipation that the Fed slash primary dealers will support the seven-year auction today. Second buy will be 29 to 25. Getting started because they can't take, they can't move the paper uh, without um, some up and down. Sell one will be 11 to 15, then 19 to 23. But it's all, it, everything gets down today is what is this news? And we're going to get, we're going to get started first with um, the ADP number. And it will impact the market. Then we'll have the GDP shortly thereafter. And unfortunately, we're putting one of those Newsday situations where if you know the news, you got you you know the trade. And that never changes. So today is probably the biggest Newsday um, that we faced for a long time. Then Friday's non-farm payroll number. And they're looking for 231 right now, subject to change off the uh, ADP. So all the numbers forecast for this week uh, are, if they come in as forecast, would definitely be supportive for the economy. And the economy needs some good news because uh, the news hasn't been very good of late. Once you get past earnings per share, consistently good. Looking at the 30-year. Knob spread has come in to 30 seconds. Uh, this morning we were looking at 15 and uh, basically 13, 16. Yesterday it was 13, 17 and a half. Um, that's come up uh, a half a point since last Friday. And the knob spread during auction week usually yields. Um, $500, a half point to a full point over the course of two or three trading days.
Okay, uh, the last rotate up stopped at 28. We're at 22. Uh, so we've got definitely resistance at 139. So 27 to 31 will be cell 1. And then cell 2 will open it up if we move higher. 7 to 11. Again, they can't take the market straight up uh, because of um, they got to move the seven year paper. It takes them back and forth. 13 to 17 will be buy one. And uh, then 5 to 9 will be buy two. I like the buy side better because once the news is out of the way, you get back to the business of moving paper for the treasury. And you can't move paper with the market headed straight down. No incentive for the buyers in those situations. Okay, gold had a pretty quiet night, or it looked pretty quiet at 6 a.m. this morning. So uh, the GDP news will definitely impact gold prices. If it comes in as forecast, gold should sell some. If it comes in lower than forecast, gold should rally. As forecast, more people going back to work, higher tax revenues, less need to print money. The Fed taking $15 billion out of its current quantitative easing program is a negative for gold. So uh, we've got our attractor down here at 93.95. So buy one, and again, it's all we're, we're going to get a reaction off the news headlines. And then we'll put 85, 87 as buy two. Just put some room down there um, for the market to move. Um, Got a little volume up here in the three to five area, so we'll make three to five sell one. Again, that's given the news. That's that trade carries some risk with it. Ten to twelve doesn't carry very much risk with it, but it's all going to get down to what is the news. The 85, 87, and the 13, 10, 12 uh, could very easily be hit by gold on the reaction to the news. It's just it's that kind of contract. Fifteen dollars is a nothing to gold. Okay, crude probably won't be impacted much by the news today. Uh, the EIA inventory report comes out at uh, 1030 Eastern uh, and that's no guarantee as to which way the market will move. They're looking for a draw. Um, the fighting uh, in the Middle East and the fighting, potential fighting in Russia is um, supportive. And we are carrying a premium. I, we'd be below 100 if it weren't for the wars right now, uh, given economic softness around the world. So uh, we're kind of where we were last night. 75 to 101 will be buy one. 25 to 50 will be buy two. On the uh, sell side, 101.75 to 102, fairly aggressive. And then 225, 250. Okay, the euro. Uh, if the numbers come in as forecast, the euro will be lower. They come in less than forecast. Then on a relative basis, the perception of the U.S. economy won't be uh, 
it won't be as strong as the forecast suggested by the euro but in any event I think the euro is still a long-term sell I think we are headed lower uh, as you well know uh, we left yesterday's market wanting to sell 20s to 30s uh, the overnight session stopped in the 15 area so you just have to step up the plate and get short at the market if you want to get anything off on this contract. So 15 to 25 will be sell one. And again, it's a Newsday trade. Then 40 to 50 will be sell two. Uh, leaning against the uh, 50 area, I think, is the easiest trade to see. Um, we had a 90 to 134 even buy. Um, that's probably reasonable. Again, it's down to the news. And then 65 to 75 for buy two. Okay, the E mini. Uh, a lot riding. Uh, companies about I, I forget what the number was we're beating the top line estimates uh, pretty close to 70 or north of 70 and so far our reporting companies 78 percent of the companies have beaten their earnings per share forecast that's easy to do if you're a fortune 500 or fortune 1000 with one-off uh, adjustments that you can do to your balance sheet goodwill uh, all sorts of stuff so uh, everybody is happy uh, when the companies beat their earnings per shares, they all underreport what they think they're going to do uh, to give themselves a little bit of a pad. But when they come in and beat the numbers, uh, the SEC likes it, the Fed likes it, they can't get in trouble for doing that. So uh, there's a lot of incentive built in to beat your earnings for share. The other one is is executive compensation. So they use stock buybacks uh, to make sure that uh, there's fewer shares out there to spread their earnings over. Uh, so their compensation packages are higher. And that's the law of unintended consequences. goes back to, uh, I believe, Clinton's days when they made executive salaries in excess of a million dollars uh, get a higher tax rate or penalized for that. Plus if you can do it via capital gains it lowers the tax rate for the uh, executive too. So they all know how to push the numbers and get it just the way they want it so their take-home pay is greater than it was last quarter etc. So here we are the market has been sold down into the news ADP will cause a reaction. Pretty generous number, 235, which is about where the uh, non farm payroll number is on Friday. All is going to boil down to GDP. Now, ironically, if this number comes in much lower than forecast, after the uh, initial washout, this market could rally uh, because the Fed will have to be more supportive, and that's been what has held the market up since March of 2009. So, a worse than forecast GDP number does not necessarily mean lower stock prices. What it will do is add fuel to the fire that our economy is not growing and that. Uh, the future is suspect. Um, we do not get uniform increases or beats of economic forecasts for numbers. Uh, it's spotty. In fact, most of them, when you get past the headlines, uh, show weaker than forecast numbers. No one will pay any attention to the deflator at two. Crude inventories, no one will pay any attention to. Then the FOMC announcement and the taper minus 15 billion is expected and unchanged on the interest rates but the comments 
about whatever this GDP number is, is what the market will focus on. So if this number in normal times, if that number came in like less than 2.9, 2.8, the market would sell. We can't count on that. So we've got, we're very, very close to all-time highs. Uh, if the GDP number is greater than forecast, the Fed can continue its taper and can raise interest rates because the economy is strong, buy stocks. If the number comes in less than forecast, uh, the Fed can't continue to taper. The Fed has to be accommodated for longer than the current thinking, buy stocks. It's uh, just the way this market is. So the first buy area is in the 60, 62. We're going to give it a little bit of room. I think that's really, really good support. And then our 55, 57. On the uh, sell, uh, because of the news, 74, 76 will be sell one. I think you have to give it some room. Then 79 to 80, one for sell two. But we'll adjust it after the news. I mean, it's just it's a news day trade. If you know the news, you have the trade. It's uh, pretty cut and dry. The problem on you will you'll be able to play it on a news day basis for uh, in the financials and the other markets by um, going with the news on the first correction on the E mini. Uh, you don't know which way to trade it from because of the implications for what the Fed's going to do. Okay, it'll take at least 15 minutes to get everything up and posted. I'm going to get busy on that. Uh, we'll be back after the ADP news, which comes in nine minutes. Looking for 235,000 growth in private employment. Back with you as soon as possible.